Welcome back to the Therapy for Asthma free course and after we talked about the asthma medications and the treatment of persistent asthma, now we are going to talk about the treatment of asthma exacerbation according to the GINA guidelines. Topics that will be covered include the definition of an asthma exacerbation and the patient classification in the emergency room into mild, moderate, severe, or life-threatening asthma exacerbation. And then we will talk about the management of asthma exacerbation. And finally, we will talk about the features in patients with higher risk of asthma-related death. So asthma flare-up or exacerbation is an acute or subacute worsening in asthma symptoms and lung function from the patient usual status. So the patient present with worsening, shortness of breath, chest tightness, wheezing, and coughing from their usual status. And this may be the initial presentation of asthma. So if the patient present to you with these features, you start the patient immediately on short acting beta agonist and oxygen. And then you classify the patient into mild, moderate, or severe, or life-threatening asthma exacerbation by assessing exacerbation severity through the following. By assessing if the patient is able to speak sentences or only words, and by assessing respiratory rate, pulse rate, oxygen saturation, and lung function, for example, the peak expiratory flow rate. And note the potential of overestimation of pulse oximetry readings in patients with dark skin color. Now let's talk about the details of the patient classification. So again, we classify them into mild, moderate, severe, or life-threatening asthma exacerbation. So in the patient with mild to moderate asthma exacerbation, they will talk in phrases so they can complete a whole sentence without taking a breath and they prefer sitting to lying and they are not agitated. For mild to moderate asthma exacerbation, the patient respiratory rate increased but it is less than 30 and their accessory muscles are not used and their pulse rate is 100 to 120 beats per minute and their oxygen saturation is 90 to 95 percent on air and their big expiratory flow rate is higher than 50 percent of the predicted or their best big expiratory flow rate. Now for the patients with severe asthma exacerbation, so they will talk in words, they cannot complete a whole sentence without taking a breath and they will sit in a tripod position, meaning they will be hunched forward and they will be agitated. Their respiratory rate is higher than 30, their accessory muscles are in use, and their pulse rate is higher than 120 beats per minute, and their oxygen saturation is less than 90% on air, and their peak expiratory flow rate is less than 50% of the predicted or their best readings. And the third group is the group with life-threatening asthma exacerbation. So those patients who present drowsy, confused, or they have silent chest. So again, when the patient presents to you with an asthma exacerbation, you start them immediately on short-acting beta agonist and oxygen, and then you classify them into mild, moderate, severe, and life-threatening on the classification that we mentioned before, and then you consider the differential diagnosis of anaphylaxis, uncompensated heart failure, inhaled foreign body, or pulmonary embolism. Now for the patients that you classified them as mild to moderate, you can start them on early oral corticosteroids. In addition to the oxygen and short-acting beta agonist you started with, and then you check the response of symptoms and saturation 
frequently and you measure the lung function after one hour of starting treatment. Now for the other patients that you classified them as severe or life-threatening, then you immediately start inhaled short-acting beta agonist and inhaled ibratrobium bromide and oxygen and systemic corticosteroids. Then you transfer these patients to acute care facility or intensive care unit. For the oxygen, then Gina recommends you titrate the oxygen to a target of 93 to 95% in adults and adolescents older than 12 and 94 to 98% in children 6 to 11. If the patient has inadequate response to previous measures, then the intravenous magnesium sulfate should be considered and it is very important that you do not routinely perform chest x-rays, blood gases, and you don't routinely prescribe antibiotics for asthma exacerbations unless there is a clear indication for them. And it is very important that you do not use sedatives because they impair the respiratory drive that is keeping the patient alive. Now the inhaled albuterol is what is most commonly used as a short-acting beta agonist for bronchodilation in asthma exacerbations, but studies have shown similar efficacy of the budesonide for meterol. So you can use the budesonide for meterol too. Now let's talk about the monitoring and discharge. So the patient monitored frequently for response and the patient assessed for discharge if symptoms have improved and if the short-acting beta agonist is not needed and if the peak expiratory flow rate is improving more than 60 to 80 percent of personal best or predicted and if the oxygen saturation is higher than 94 percent on room air and if the patient home resources are adequate finally let's talk about the asthma related death so there is a specific features that you should look for that increase the risk of asthma related death and those features include features in patient history and those include history of near fatal asthma exacerbation requiring intubation and ventilation and also hospitalization or emergency care for asthma in the last year they also include features related to medications so those include the patient not currently using inhaled corticosteroid or with poor adherence to inhaled corticosteroid and also the patient who are currently using or recently stopped the oral corticosteroid and that means that this patient had recent asthma exacerbation and also in the features that increase the risk of asthma related death the patient who is overusing the short acting beta agonist to more than 200 doses per month. Now also there is features related to patient comorbidities. So the patient with history of psychiatric disease or psychosocial problems, this means that this patient is not compliant to treatment and patients with confirmed food allergy and patients with other comorbidities such as infections, for example, pneumonia, also diabetes or heart disease and features increasing risk of asthma related death also include lack of written asthma action plan and with that we reach the end of this video thank you guys for watching please give us a like comment your ideas and questions and subscribe and this video is a part of a bigger class it's called therapy for asthma masterclass you can check it out Link will be in the description of this video.